This is a very common style of light that you can buy on eBay from China. And it, they come with various caps, but the main thing is that it's this type of LED that alternates between two colours. So this one is alternating between red and blue, and the other type uh, alternates between um, red and green. And I get the feeling that the reason, there's a reason for that uh, they all have red as one of the colours. I think it's because the red has a lower forward voltage, and it might mean that all that's really happening in these is that the red LED is being flashed on and off, and because it's in parallel, basically, with the blue and green LED, the LEDs, it, the lower forward voltage over the red means that the red, when the red lights, the blue is shunted out. That's just a wild guess, though. It would make it very simple. It would just mean that this was basically a flashing LED chip, but repurposed to actually do this dual colour thing. But these things uh, run off the mains. Uh, in our case, well, at the moment it's running off 240 volts. Um, and it's drawing about 1.5 watts uh, at 242 volts. And the current is about 6 milliamps, which is reasonable enough. It, it looks bright enough for that. So let's uh, take a closer look at the circuitry. The main supply goes up this single insulated cable to this little... Uh, plastic case. And I have to say, initially I thought this was going to contain a um, capacitive dropper. But instead, hot melt glued inside is... Let's see if I can get this out. It's not coming out too easy. Oh, I've just pulled a wire off, not to worry. It's a discrete bridge rectifier based around four diodes. Um, other versions of this... Hold on, I'll just grab another version. For instance, this one that runs at much higher current is a bit scary in that sense. Uh, it uses um, a similar set of power supply, but I noticed that this one has a capacitor, and initially when I saw the capacitor, I thought, oh, capacitive dropper, but it's not. The capacitor is just across the output, just so that uh, during the zero crossing point of the mains waveform, there's that slight residual uh, voltage um, is remains. A slight current trickles through them just to keep the position of the uh, sort of the the counters basically in the sort of chip flashers and I did uh, I made a string myself um, using those uh, multicolor flashing LEDs and I found that without that capacitor in my case uh, the uh, depending on the ambient light level it was quite they were quite sensitive if there was a, a modest light level they'd lose their position they'd start flickering backwards and forwards between the two colors or they'd just stick in one color just occasionally flicking over to the other one but these ones they seem much more stable despite the fact they don't have that capacitor um the Current is limited. The LEDs are all in series. In fact, this is where I could just dump these in the floor and leave this one up here. The LEDs are glued in. They've got the normal heat shrink arrangement you'd find with sort of generic sort of dodgy LED fair lights. And they've got the tiny little resistor, the sort of eighth watt resistor in here. Uh, I'm just going to tame this down a bit because I turned it up. Yeah, yeah, I think that's better. Uh, so they've got a resistor in series, but only for the first five caps. Uh, hold on, one, two, three, four, five. So here's number five, which has its resistor. And number six, beyond that, uh, doesn't have a resistor and none of the other ones has it either. And the resistor value is, let me remember the colour code here, uh, it's Green, brown, red. So that's 5, 1, and two zeros, 5.1K, 5 5,100 ohms. So it's got those five resistors in the series, and that all adds up to 5,100 ohms. 5,100 ohms times 5, it gives a total of 25.5 thousand ohms. So if we do the maths then, um, let me get, bring a notepad in. Let me doodle the circuit diagram down, that'd be quite good. And then we can just work it all out. So uh, the circuit diagram is very simple. We've got live and neutral coming in. Doesn't really matter which is live and neutral. It's going straight into a bridge rectifier. I'll just abbreviate it with a picture of a diode in the middle. So that's AC in, AC in, positive out, negative out. That's the four diodes. Uh, mains in. And the output, uh, on the negative, uh, the resistors are connected directly to the LED negatives in each of the uh, housings. And I'm guessing that's because if you look into an LED inside, it's got this sort of reflector cup 
going out to one electrode, that's the negative usually, and then it's got the little electrode at the side that has the wire just tacked onto the top and the chip in here, and then the wire bounces across onto the top of the chip. And I'm guessing that the reason they connect the, the resistor onto that lead, the negative lead, is because this one has the strongest connection into the resin. It's got this large area here in the resin versus this, which could kind of maybe snap out the side or something. I'm not really sure. But the, the downside of that is that the resistor, all the heat is going straight up to the chips, which doesn't seem that great an idea. But anyway, we've got the arrangement here. So we've got the... This is repeated times five. Uh, and then the rest of the spring, string of 28 LEDs is just the LEDs on their own going back to the positive. So uh, that's wrong, isn't it? I've drawn these all the, all the wrong way around. Uh-oh. Right, okay. Uh, right, tell you what, I'll just make that the positive and that's the negative. I'll just cheat horribly. There we go. Problem solved. Uh, but it's the same thing anyway. It's, you know, the resistors that are in series, the string. Oops. So there's 28 uh, LEDs total. So 28 times 3 volts, because uh, it's going to be roughly 3 volts across each LED, uh, maybe a tiny wee bit more, um, even though it's alternating between the th possibly sort of 3-ish and 2-ish volts as it flashes on and off. So that would give a total then of 28 LEDs times 3 volts equals 84 volts across the whole string. So if you then say 240 volts which is the main supply at the moment, minus the 84 volts, equals 240 volts, minus the uh, 84 volts, equals, that's 156 volts to drop. 156 volts to drop. And that's done across the resistors. So the resistors, uh, we have the 5 times 5,100 ohm, Uh, which was 5 times 5,100 ohm equals, uh, equals 25,500 ohm. Uh, and if they then work it out, uh, so the voltage, 156 has been, volts has been dropped across these. So that would be 156 divided by that. 156 volts divided by the 25,500 ohms equals 6 milliamps. Uh, so that's 240. Oh no, that's wrong. It's 156 divided by the 25,500 ohms equals 6 milliamps. And that's what we're getting uh, through this string. So then if you consider that it's 6 milliamps times the voltage being dropped, which is uh, 156, is the best part of a watt, it's 0.9, and you divide that by 5, because there's 5 resistors. Each resistor is dissipating approximately 0.188 watts. Let's say 0.19 watt. Uh, each resistor... Oop. 0. 1.9 watts. And those little resistors are kind of like, they look like the 8th watt resistors. They're tiny. Uh, so they're being pushed quite hard. And I measured the temperature of the resistors as 60 degrees centigrade above ambient. So they're going to get pretty warm. In a typical room temperature, say 20 to 30 degrees, it's going to be 80 to 90 degrees Celsius that those resistors are going to be running at. And this seems to be quite common that they sort of rate the resistors quite low. They, they didn't need to do that. How much harder would it have been to, say, put 10 resistors in instead of 5, just where they've uh, soldered the resistor in line with the lead and the incoming connection. They could have actually put 10 of them instead of 5 at half the value. And that would have spread the dissipation. It would have meant it would be roughly about a tenth watt each, which would have been perfect. It would have taken the heat away from the LED and it would have taken the stress off the resistor and, you know, the risk of the, uh, the uh, insulation degrading at that point. I wonder if that's just to make sure they fail in a modest length of time. You know, maybe the resistor is their little guarantee of future business that they're going to let these burn out deliberately uh, by sort of stressing the components a bit. Um, so what else is there to say about this? 
Um, the power would be the 240 volts, because it's all being dissipated across the LEDs and the resistors, it would be 240 volts times that 0 0.006 equals 1.44. We were getting roughly 1.5 watts the meter, but that's probably with the tolerance of the, the meter. So, um, yeah, it's not terribly high powered. It looks quite visual. Uh, what I was thinking there, the, if, if this was positive and you had the... You had a sort of current limiting. You've got the green LED there, which is looking for three volts, and you had the red LED with the flasher chip uh, down here. Then what I was talking about there, if the flasher chip was flashing the red LED on and off, every time the red LED was off, then the voltage across that would fly up to the three volts across that, and that would light. But as soon as the red LED came on again with the flasher chip, it would then shunt the voltage across that to about two volts, and that would put the green or the blue LED off the higher voltage LED. That's what I think might be going on in these. Um, I've never really looked into it with a microscope to see if there's any really obvious in that way. But um, yes, that's uh, fundamentally it. They're reasonable enough. Uh, the, there is that slight downside. They do get sort of warmish uh, because they're using the resistors to drop the power in that way. But um, other than that, that, as far as these sets go, that really isn't too bad by by the usual standards. They're not pushing them quite as hard as they often do. Some of them are pushing them way up to almost half a watt and you see all the, after it's been on for a while, you see it all blackening around the resistor. It's not, not great. But uh, interesting little lights. They're interesting indeed. One little extra detail worth mentioning. Uh, note that they, they do look shimmery. That's because they're just, uh, it's unsmoothed uh, rectified mains supply. So they're shimmering at about 50 hertz, which again, the iPad might be doing that sort of 60 hertz, 50 hertz thing and it doesn't like it. So it'll make them look really shimmery. But uh, one thing worth mentioning is that uh, although it's two core going in, and although it's theoretically just a single series circuit and output, there are three wires coming out, and you've got one negative wire coming out to the end of the string, this end of the string, then the other two wires are the positive, and they're just coming together in here, and they go up to the other end of the string, and can I find it, can I find the other end of the string? Probably not, it's buried. Uh, but either way, the, it goes up to the other end, and no, I really am finding the other end of the string, am I? But when it gets to the other end of the string, it uh, just goes, there it is, it just goes into the end, and the two positives just come onto the positive terminal of the LED. And you think, well, why didn't they just use two wires then? And the answer, I believe, is that if you use two wires, it makes it more prone to sort of twisting and, and spiralling up. By using the three wires, it gives it extra rigidity when you twist it, it sort of makes it more stable. Uh, so when you twist the wires together like this, it means they're they just actually hold their shape better. They form a sort of round core instead of a flat, twisted core. And it probably just means they don't tangle up so much. They don't wind into little clumps. And certainly in the past, uh, I've uh, used a cordless drill to twist um, stranded co cores together in pairs. And it's always been, as soon as you let the pressure off, they always try and wrap themselves in little knots. And if you do it with three wires, it doesn't seem to be such a problem. It just seems to be that the three wire is a better option for twisting those. So I thought it was worth mentioning a little bit of extra information.